Well, hey guys, earlier today I played uh, the first multi-track that I still have um, from the early days of my gigging career, if you'll say that. Um, but anyway, um, after I uh, attended uh, Illinois State University, I moved back to Chicago and I worked downtown for about a year. Um, and then I wound up moving down to Peoria uh, just because I was gigging a lot down here. And it just made it made sense if I was coming down uh, three, four nights a week to play. Um, I just need to move down here. So um, I rented a house by Bradley University off of Main Street and uh, University area. And um, I had converted, um, I don't say convert, but I just used the, I had this uh, sort of big uh, wood floor dining room. Um, and I transformed that into sort of my little project studio. And at the time, um, I didn't have uh, very much equipment. Um, I had, um, obviously, I had lots of drums. Um, I had uh, um, a good selection of microphones because being a drummer, you just wind up having a lot of microphones because with a lot of drums comes lots of microphones. Um, and I was using um, Digital Performer, which I still use today. It's the program that I've been using forever. Um, and I had a uh, Mackie mixer, 16 channels. So I had 16 inputs uh, into my recording software, um, which was great. Um, and so on this recording, um, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, I think we did like nine inputs tracking or 10 inputs tracking. Um, I don't know why that is. I probably could have had more. Um, I think we just... Um, kept it simple. I might've actually tracked eight and overdubbed the keyboard part. Um, I can't really remember. Um, if, if anybody was there, <laughs> they'll have to refresh my memory because I'm just noticing I didn't have a hi-hat mic and I only had a mono overhead mic. So I'm thinking at the time I probably did eight, we were doing eight inputs. And I think shortly after this, I expanded my, um, uh, my interface did 24 inputs, and so um, I think I got some kind of ex uh, optical expander to allow me to do 16 inputs. But anyway, um, I've got a kick snare, uh, two toms, and a mono overhead, and then bass guitar, uh, and then we probably overdubbed the keyboards and overdubbed the vocals. Um, so anyway, uh, this was the band that I, I came down and was playing with, and it consisted of Mike Means that was singing and playing guitar, a great old friend, uh, Best man at my wedding, uh, great guy. Uh, Jimmy Jenkins was playing bass, who um, actually died just uh, uh, just a couple months ago. Um, uh, but just a just a great bass player, um, and um, uh, I had I had traveled with him with Eddie King uh, around the country playing, um, and just a just a incredible bass player. Um, I don't know what to say other than that. Um, we just uh, we always had fun. Um, Communicating in a musical language, shall we say. And then Jake Vose um, was playing keyboards. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to play a little bit of this, but this is really the first a time um, I tracked like a like a full band and we did a little demo. Uh, this is, you know, just to get gigs or whatever, but this song is called High Calorie Woman. It is a Anthony Gomes tune and uh, very popular in the blues world. And uh, he was just sort of coming out uh, when this was recorded, which was about 1999, possibly, I'd say 1999, uh, but prior to 2000, so I'd say 1999. Um, and anyway, so I'm going to play this for you, and uh, we can hear what it sounds like. It sounds pretty good. Um, again, thinking about it was in 1999, which was about, you know, 20 years ago. And um, um, I remember I had several other bands after, you know, I the house was pretty famous, um, for some of the local musicians, because they'd come over and they'd record demos and things like that. But I think I was the first person in the area, or at least in Peoria. I don't, I don't want to say the first, but one of the first. You know, I was recording on a hard disk based system on my Mac, and no, there was really nobody doing that at the time. Um, so it was still kind of new. And I remember people would come over and say, um, um, my, everybody told me that you were recording. And then they would look and they'd just see, you know, my Mac, my monitor, um, some studio monitors set up. Um, and they were expecting, you know, a big console and again, you know, some ADATs or Tascam, uh, DA88s or something like that. Um, but anyway, um, and it's, it's, um, it's great because, uh, since I still use the same program, I can pull up these old files and I can load them in, um, add some newer plugins. And so this was originally recorded at 16 bits, 44 point, whatever it is, 44.1 kilohertz, whatever. And so now it's, it's bumped up to, to 2448. 
um, which um, doesn't really mean anything other than I think the plugins operate at the, the high resolution. So anyway, I want to play this for you, and um, uh, this is what it sounds like.
All right. Well, that's it. And, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to it, um, I was just thinking about, um, you know, we set up, um, I think the drums, in, 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 although I only recorded two times, I did have my bigger kit. I think the, the turquoise sparkle DW kit was was in there. So it was probably, um, you know, uh, uh, 8, 10, 12, 14. I think a 13-inch DW snare drum was what I used on that. It sounds like that's that's the one. Um, but so I, so I got the drum set up kind of in the dining room and I think Jamie was, um, in the same room as me. And I think Mike was playing guitar in the other room and, um, we had the guitar amp just kind of pointed away from the drums, but everything was recorded, you know, live again together, no click or anything. And then, um, we overdubbed the keyboards just cause I, I, I didn't have enough inputs to try everything live. So, but when I think of that, that's just all one pass with no overdubs. Um, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty even happy with that today. I mean, there's some some timing inconsistencies, of course, um, but um, uh, it's a good representation of the stuff that I was doing back in around 1999, 2000, and just playing around the clubs and the bars and uh, stuff with Eddie King, and you know, um, when we'd open up for him and um, before we did his show. Um, and anyhow, so that's it. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, um, I'm looking forward to 2019, doing some new music, um, uh, working with a uh, an artist um, soon. So um, looking forward to it and hope you guys enjoy these little videos. Uh, uh, I wonder if anybody listens or watches these all the way through, but... Uh, uh, if you did and you made it to this point, congratulations. You're probably one of the few because uh, probably most people tuned off, you know, 10 seconds in. But anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys later.